Hi friends, thanks for checking back again my channel, uh, Testing Mini Bytes. Uh, today we'll see an interesting topic uh, in uh, in extent reports. That's how how we can customize the extent reports that we are generating. Previously we don't have much options, but uh, now in the latest version they have given lot given lot of options to customize our extent reports. So we'll see one of uh, each one of them, and I'll also list out you know what we're going to achieve. Okay. So first, let's see the you know report that we have already generated. So if you if you're directly checking this uh, part four, maybe you need to you know check the previous versions before jumping on to this particular section. So yeah, so this is the report that we have generated you know in the previous sections, right? So we have a login test, we have a home page test, and this <coughs> this we can call it as test test tab, right? And this is a test tab. This is your category tab where you can categorize your test with according to different tags. So for now we have smoke and regression categories. We also can, you know, have a separate tab for our devices where you can have your devices compatibility or your browser compatibility related stuff. Again, you, you, you can also categorize based on the author, uh, uh, you know, and then you at the end you have this dashboard. Okay, this cool dashboard. but that is a new requirement for me that I am not interested in, you know, showing these values or I want to change the order in which these values are getting displayed. So by default, when you open your report, you know, your test tab, you know, the test tab will be displayed, but I want to change that. I want to see the dashboard view first, and then I want to see the test tab. And then I also don't want uh, maybe the author okay, because I am not interested in that. So, so I want to do some customization. Okay, so that's our first goal. So let me go here and then first one, um, we want to change the view order. And the second requirement is, I think we want to remove some some tabs because I'm not interested in them, right? Some menu. Okay, I want to remove them. And what else I want to do? So. So again, if you if you go to the test tab, again, you know, I want to highlight once it is getting passed or once it is getting failed, I want to highlight this particular, uh, you know, this particular string so that, you know, it's more, you know, visually appealing, right? So uh, if I have 100 logs, uh, I want to highlight something, then there is an option to do that. So we can also do that, okay? That's part of customizing. So I can include, uh, uh, highlight a particular particular log line okay I'll so let's let's consider this is a log line this is a log line so I want to only highlight this particular log line okay so this is our third requirement and we also want to do you know if there is a list of elements okay list of string maybe some values okay how can I log log in the reports and at the end, I have a map, okay, uh, with some string, okay, with some string comma string values, okay. I want to print it in the report, okay. How can I print it in much cleaner way? Log in the report. Again, if you if you are, uh, if you we have already seen how we can log JSON and uh, you know XML. So if you are if you are new here, maybe you have to check the previous video. So now we we are going to you know see these five things in this particular video. Right, so let's go one by one. The first we'll, we'll customize the viewing order. Okay, so let me you know remove this. And wait, when you are creating an in instance for your extern Spark reporter, I know they ha also have something new here. Okay, so I think it's called a view configurer. Okay, if you go there again, you will get a lot of options. Okay, so so what I want to do, I want to change the viewing order. Right, so let me go there. And how I want to change. So they're telling, so if you were going to pass me a list of view names, I will only display that. Or you can also pass the string string array, okay, of that. So I, I'll go for the string array. So what I need to do, I need to pass a view name string array, right? That's view, view name and string array. Okay, let me import this view name. So this is coming from your uh, Avent stack extent reports. Okay, this, and then what is the view name that I want to see first? This is the view order, right? I want to see the dashboard on the top. Okay, 
and then I want to see view name dot test tab next okay and I also want to see view name dot category but I don't want to see maybe the second requirement also we can do so I don't want to see the other things only I want to see dashboard test and the category devices not there I'm not interested so I'm not going to see and just apply these particular rules okay once you do that you know you can see the change you know the viewing order will be changed and you will only see this uh, you know only these three so we have satisfied this first two requirements so let's see whether it, you know how it is working so it's very simple guys the configuration they have made it really simple again the, you know i cannot tell you the exact use case where we need to use this but if you are you know end up being so if you notice that the dashboard view is on top now okay and then you have your test view next and then you also have your category if you, if you notice closely the author tab and the devices that's menu bars are not displayed here because we haven't you know applied them good so this is some particular thing that we have already achieved now let's go here and then try to achieve our third one highlight a particular log line so let's say i want to highlight this pass login test successfully with a green color okay so instead of writing like this i just need to use mockup okay so there is a mockup helper guys. so this this class has a lot of things guys so just go and explore so if you want to previously we have used the code block now what i'm going to do there is something called as create a label okay i want to create a label with the text of this okay the text of this and the color value they have already the color defined in them so extend color dot okay normally we use uh, green right so for pass so we can use the green color okay let me also keep this i'm not removing it so that we can compare how it is displayed same way i am copying this and pasting it here okay maybe it's test one for the second test case i want to fail it but this time i want to use a red color okay because for fail we normally use a red color so now let's see how it is getting displayed and if you want to change the color for your uh, skip you know for as a as a yellow you can do that as well so let me go to the test view and then see now previously it was logging like this now it has created as a label and the background color is now changed to green you can use whatever the color you want for fail i have used red so by just simply adding a uh, you know, uh, few lines of code, we are able to customize our whole extent report. So now we have achieved these three. Now let's go and see how we can uh, you know, do this. See, for some reasons, okay, if I want to print all the values, uh, suppose the number of links, I have 50 links in my page. I want to display all of them in the report, maybe for some auditing purpose or something. Okay, so in that case, normally how we used to do, so let's assume I have a string, you know, so let's say, so I have a list of strings, so let's assume, okay. Let's say it's selenium, say APM, and I also have rest issue. Okay, so I have these three. Okay, so now with these values, if I normally have to work on that, then what I need to do, again, I'm doing something wrong here. Yeah, I can use a new string array, everything is same. Okay, anything is fine. So here, now I, I'm getting a list, right? So what I can do, I can use a for each loop so to print all the values. So test dot pass. So, so if, you're, if you're understanding what is a lambda, then you can understand this, or you can use a conventional for loop to print everything. So I want to print everything. Okay, whatever the string that is coming, I just want to print it in the report. Again, we are receiving the same thing and then printing it here. So I can use a lambda here. 
I can do like this. So by this, so let's run the test and see how it's displayed in the report. You can use a normal for loop that doesn't matter. Okay, so if you notice selenium APM rest assured these all getting lagged in different different lines again If I have a, if I want to print all the values in a drop down if it is having hundred values say for country drop down Okay, then it'll it, the, the lag lines getting increased, right? So I don't want to do that I just want to log all these things in a single line. Okay, so extent reports have given a new thing now. So what they have done is so Test dot pass. Okay, again you have your markup helper, right? This markup helper dot create ordered list. So this particular method is accepting an object. Okay, so what object I'm going to pass now? I'm going to pass a list object. Okay, this is the list object. So if we pass this entire list object. Okay, I don't have to pass this. Okay, I can remove this and get markup. Okay, so if we do like this, okay, it should print everything in one single line. Okay, let's see how, how it is doing. So I'm just trying to print all the values of this particular array list, array, right? Array list in a, in a particular uh, single log line. Let me go to the test tab. And if you notice, yeah, we are logging everything in, in, a, in, a, in a single log line. So this is more useful, right, in our use case. Again, uh, you know, you can, uh, if you if you don't want that to be numbered, okay, if you notice closely, it is numbered with one, two, and three in the start. If you don't want that, okay, then you can use create unordered list, okay. I think it's create, yeah, create unordered list. Okay, if you do like this, then it will not be numbered. Again, they have written a lot of new methods that will help us to, you know, make our life easy. Let me go to the test tab. See, now it's having a bulleting points, right? It's not having numbers now. So we have done with our fourth requirement. Now we ha also have a new requirement that we have a map. Okay, maybe you have a key value pair. Okay, so you want to uh, write it in the logs. Okay, previously how we used to do that. So let me create, uh, let me quickly create something now. So let, okay, I have a map that's gonna hold a key of string type and the value of string type. Okay, let me create a oh, map and let me import this from Java, java.util, right? So I'm gonna have a map dot put some values. Okay, it's of string comma string type. So let me name it as sorry f name the first name is a more than and I have my L name. So channel name. So, so I have like this. Okay. Previously, how we used to do print in that, you know, extent reports. You know, I use like this. I have a. I have to pass this map as a string, right? So what I will do, I'll use a map dot for each. So it'll ac accept a by consumer. Again, you can use a entry map. You know, or a for each loop, that's up to you. But here I'm using, you know, the Lambda. So it, my job will be a little easy. So what are the value I'm getting? I just want to print it in the report. So test dot pass. Okay. And then key plus I want to put a semicolon in between them. And then I want to print the value. Okay, I want to do like this. I don't know why it is showing somewhere. Maybe I'll create it again. So far each. 
Okay, I'm gonna hold key comma value. What are the key value that's coming? Okay, I want to do test dot pass key happening with the semicolon and then the value. Okay, now it's all good. So let's try to run and see how it is normally getting displayed. Again, you can use a for each, for each loop or your map entry. You know, you can iterate like your conventional way, but I'm using a Lambda because it's much simpler. Again, if you print it, it will come like this. Okay, in each line again, I don't want to do that. I want to write everything in a single line. Like our previous case, we just need to do test.pass. Again, what I can do, markup helper, dot create an order list because I, I don't want it to be ordered or I don't want to be numbered with uh, some numbers. Okay, so an order list and then just pass the map. Okay, just pausing this map reference. Okay, get mock. Okay, so this is the guys. So instead of doing like this way, I'm just commenting it. We are doing like this. Okay. Now run as test ng test. Now you should see everything in a single line. Again, there are different use cases if you want to use in your uh, Selenium or APM test, but I, it's just giving you the idea how we can uh, you know, display everything in a single log line. Huh? Good, suppose if you want to be numbered, you can also use create order list so that it will be numbered with one, two, three. So it will be really helpful if you want to check how many values present in the dropdown. If it is numbered like 40, 1 to 40 then you can understand there are 40 values right so that's really cool that's all i have to share for now i think we have done with all the requirements thanks for visiting my channel if you've learned something new please subscribe to my channel thank you guys have a good day bye